In section 9.6, part 1, we will translate conic sections. Conic sections are just conics are curves formed by the intersection of a plane and a double nap cone. Here are two of the conic sections, the parabola and the circle, and the standard form for these conics is listed. In our first example, we're going to graph the quantity x plus 5 squared plus y take away 1, the quantity squared equals 4, identify the center and the radius. This is the circle, both our variables x and y are squared, and this equation is in that standard form, x take away h, the quantity squared, plus y take away k, the quantity squared, equals r squared. So identifying the center, which is going to be hk, we have a center for this circle, of negative 5, 1. Negative 5 is our h value, it's subtracted from x, and 1 is our k value, it's subtracted from y. Our radius for this equation is the square root of 4, or 2. So when we graph this circle, we want to graph the center, negative 5, 1, and then use the radius to find four points on the circle. So I'm going to go up two units from the center, down two units from the center, to the left and to the right two units, and then draw the circle through those points. In example two, we're going to graph a parabola. We know it's a parabola because one of the variables is squared and the other is not. This equation is in the form y take away k, the quantity squared, is equal to 4p times x take away h. And in this form, the vertex is hk. So we'll locate the vertex first. For this equation, the vertex is h is negative 4 and k is negative 3. Because y is squared, we know that this parabola is opening left or right, and because our p-value is positive, it's going to be opening right. So let's put this equation in that standard form to show our p-value. Let's factor 4 out of our focal width of 20, so we'll write 20 as 4 times 5, so we can see that our p-value is positive 5. So I'm going to graph the vertex, negative 4, negative 3, and I'm going to graph the focus 5 units inside this parabola that's opening to the right, and I'm going to graph the directrix 5 units on the other side of that vertex. It's the vertical line outside the parabola that's opening to the right. Okay, and now I need to know how wide to draw this parabola, so I'll use that focal width of 20 to graph the endpoints of the focal width. So I'm going to go up 10 units from the focus, and I'm going to go down 10 units. And I'm going to approximate that distance. Okay, and then I'll draw this parabola through those points opening to the right, through the vertex and those endpoints of the focal width. Okay, uh, we need to name that focus. And that focus is located at 1, negative 3 on our graph. The directrix is that vertical line. So its equation is x equals negative 9. And the axis of symmetry is the horizontal line that divides this parabola into two equal pieces. 
So it's going to be the horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at negative 3, and its equation is y equals negative 3. Okay, on this page we have the standard form equations for the ellipse and the hyperbola. And in our third example, we're going to graph an ellipse. I know it's an ellipse because um, the terms are added. In a hyperbola, the terms would be subtracted. So this ellipse is in standard form x take away h, the quantity squared, over a squared, plus y take away k the quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. And the center of this ellipse is hk. So the center for the ellipse that we're going to graph has an h value of 1, that's what's subtracted from x, and a k value of negative 2, that's what's subtracted from y. Now because the larger value squared is a and it's underneath x, we know that this ellipse has a horizontal major axis and our a value is 4. Our b value is 3. So now graphing that center of 1, negative 2 and going a distance of 4 units, a units on either side of the center to find the endpoints of the major axis and then b units up and down from the center, three units up and down from the center to locate the endpoints of the minor axes. We can draw our ellipse. Okay, and now name those parts. We have vertices at negative three, negative two, and positive 5, negative 2, and we have covertices located at 1, 1, and 1, negative 5, Okay, we need vertices, covertices, and foci. To name the foci, we need to find c. And for the ellipse, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c is going to equal the square root of a squared, which is 16, minus b squared, which is 9. Or c is going to equal the square root of 7. And so to locate those foci inside the ellipse on the major axes, we are going to add and subtract the square root of 7 from the x-coordinate of our center. So 1 is going to be at 1 minus the square root of 7, negative 2, and the other foci or focus is going to be located at 1 plus the square root of 7, negative 2. In example four, we're going to graph a hyperbola. And it's in standard form y take away k, the quantity squared, over a squared, minus x take away h, the quantity squared, over b squared equals 1. The center of this hyperbola is at hk. So the center for the hyperbola we're going to graph is located at negative 3, that's our h value, that's what's subtracted from x, and 2, that's our k value, that's what's subtracted from y. Okay, now because y is our positive term, this hyperbola is going to have a vertical transverse axis, and our distance of a units is 2, our distance of b units is 3. So I'm going to graph the center, negative 3, 2, and a units up and down from that center is where I'm going to find the vertices. So two units up and down from the center. 
and then I can use that distance of B and go three units on either side of the center in the other direction so that I can build the box to draw the asymptotes through for this hyperbola. So remember the asymptotes go through the corners of the box and through the center of the hyperbola. One with a positive slope and one with a negative slope. Okay, now I'm ready to draw the branches of this hyperbola, and the branches are going to pass through those vertices on the vertical major axes, and then follow the asymptotes. So the branches open up and down. Okay, the parts of this um, hyperbola besides the center we have vertices that are located on that vertical major axis one at negative three four and another vertex at negative three zero okay we have foci to name but we need our c value that's the distance that the foci are from the center on that vertical transverse axis and c, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared for the hyperbola. So c for this hyperbola is going to be equal to the square root of a squared, which is 4, plus b squared, which is 9, or the square root of 13. Okay, and now to name those foci on that vertical major axis, we're going to add and subtract the square root of 13 to our y value of the center. So we're going to go over three units to the left and then up two plus the square root of 13 units and over three units to the left and down two minus the square root of 13 units. Okay, we need asymptotes and the asymptotes for this hyperbola with a vertical transverse axis is going to take the form y take away k is equal to plus or minus a over b that's the slope times x take away h so substituting in those values of k which is 2 a which is 2 and b which is 3 times x take away h which is negative 3. That's double negative, so I'll write x plus 3. And now I need to put these two equations in standard form, so I'm going to distribute first through the quantity by positive 2 thirds, so I get 2 thirds x. 2 thirds times 3, 3 is canceled, and I get 2, and I'm adding 2 from the other side. So one asymptote is y equals 2 thirds x plus 4, and my second asymptote I'll distribute through by negative two-thirds. So I get negative two-thirds x and negative two-thirds times three. Three's cancel, so I get negative two. And I'm adding two from the other side, so my y-intercept here is going to be zero. So I get y equals negative two-thirds x plus zero. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 4 on page 651 of your textbook.